So in this lab, we are going to get familiar some uh, vector data analysis. And also, I think the most importantly, most important part is that, so how can you use those analysis to try to answer some questions? Um, so here you can see we have the uh, Octet Pro is open. So let's first create our map and download the data that we need for this lab. So let's open create a template, uh, open the map template, and let's call it lab seven. And again, we are going to save our data into our OneDrive folder. And we are going to create a new folder that um, in OneDrive for lab seven. So lab seven. Okay, uh, so now the project is being created. Uh, so let's first go to catalog and let's download the data that we need. So let's go to catalog portal and let's download the population data that are maintained at the living atlers. So where um, the S3 maintain those data. So let's search population state and specifically we are looking for this one ACS population variables so let's drag this one to our projects and it contains three layers so the, the population at the state level uh, population at the county level and also population at the census track level um, so we just need the first one and also, if you uh, if you right click the attribute um, table of this one, you will know that actually each layer contains a lot of columns. So we just need population for each state and also for each county. So what we are going to do next is that we are going to export the data to our local uh, geo database. So we are repeat that we what we did in the lecture so and here you can see import data and also the database uh, so let's call this one state population and let's keep uh, the state uh, GNIS code geo code uh, postal code a uh, name uh, we don't need uh, the area of the land we don't need the area of the water. And this is the total population, so we can keep that. And everything beneath total population, so we can use Shift K and we can remove. Okay, so make sure that we just keep uh, one, two, three, four, five, those five um, columns, especially we have the name of the state and also population. And let's run this export. Okay, so we have the state population being exported. So if we check the attribute table, and so we have exactly what we want, population, state name, and also the other code that we may need uh, in the future. And let's do the same thing for the county. So let's see, data, export, and this one, let's call it county population. And let's just keep uh, the county's code. And we don't need area of the land, area of the water. Let's keep the county name and our state name and also total population. So everything that beneath total population will be uh, removed. OK, so make sure we just keep one, two, three, four, five, five columns, especially the county name, the state name, and also total population of that county. And let's run it. Okay, uh, so now we have the county that is ready. And again, if you check the population uh, attribute table, and you can see we have the population, state name, county name, etc. Okay, great. Uh, so now we can safely remove um, uh, the downloaded, uh, the feature from the living atlers. 
Okay, and if we go to our catalog and the project catalog, and you can see that in the geo database. So you can see the county population and also state population are now being saved. Okay, next, let's go to the all portal. So this is the way you can search the, the data that are shared by other ArcGIS users. So let's search mass shooting 2019. So that is the data that I uploaded. So remember that from the previous lab that we geocoded the mass shooting uh, from the Gong archive. And here you can see this is uh, I am the owner of this feature layer. And let's add this one to the current map. Uh, so here you can see that uh, we can also see the uh, charts that I created from the previous lab and also this uh, proportional map. Let's also uh, export this one to our uh, local geo database. Okay, so let's right click and export features. So here we can call it uh, mass shooting 2019. And we can keep all the fields, uh, that's fine. And in the environment, okay, because we geocoded those data, so this data does not have a PCS, it only has GCS. So here this is also an opportunity that we can define the PCS for those geocoded points. So we can choose that, okay, we are going to use the same PCS as the state population or the county population. And let's write. Okay, so now we see that mass shooting has been exported to our uh, geo database. So now we can safely remove the one that from the um, all portal. So now we have our data ready. So we have the mass shooting um, in the 2019. We have the population at the county level and also we have the population at the state level. So our first question focus on the mass shooting at the state level. So here we can see that um, those are the events of the mass shootings. So for each single uh, mass shooting, we know that where they are located and also how many people being killed or injured in each instance. Okay, so that's the data we have. So now the question is asking that, okay, so at the state level, so how many mass shootings are there for each single state? And also what is the total number of people being killed or injured for each uh, single state? Okay. So the question is that how many number of the mass shooting incidents in each single state and also what's the total number of people being killed or injured? For example, in this case, uh, West Virginia has zero incidents. That's great. And also you can see Virginia, there are several. Okay, so there are two uh, special analysis can help answer that question. The first one is one that we mentioned during the lecture. So if you remember that, uh, go to the we go to the analysis and you can just check open the toolbox and also find out a spatial drawing so that can help answer the question directly or if you know that in this tool window that spatial drawing actually is a uh, one that has been frequently used so we can also call it from here okay so let's click spatial drawing and in this case the target will be the state and the drawing feature will be the mass shooting. Okay. And the output. Okay, so out output should you should we should be very, very careful about output because if we give uh, uh, inappropriate output, so we can easily forget forgot what we are doing. So spatial and uh, drawing mass shooting and we keep one to one and here we can see we keep the population and the length area name etc uh, for the incident date 
we don't need that information. For the state, we don't need that information. Uh, for county, we don't need that. And also address, we don't need that. For people being killed, yes, we want to keep that one. And also to, for the aggregation or for the merge rules, we want the total. So that means for each single state, they will sum up the number of people being killed. And also similar for the number of people being injured. So we also want the total. And the match operation optional here, we can choose intersect, which is perfect. And now let's run it. OK, uh, so now you can see the result is here. So if we uncheck all the others, just look at the spatial joint. And if we right click the table, and we all see that we have uh, 52 uh, states. And we can see that uh, for different state, the, the join account is how many points are located within each state. And we actually can sort this one. Let's say descending order. Uh, California has the most number of the instance and followed by Illinois. And if we go to the right, and we can also see the total people being killed and also total people being injured. Uh, so we can also easily sort those values. OK, so Texas is a state that has most people being killed. And if we sort by injured, so California is also a state that has the most people that have been injured. So now we can we, now we have the data, we can further visualize or explore the data. So for example, uh, we can create a map to show the number of the instance in each single state, just based on this spatial drawing feature. So let's say we make sure this one is selected, and we go to the appearance, and we can create a, a graduated color. OK, we choose graduated colors. Here we use the drawing account, which equals the number of people, a number of instance. That's fine. And you can choose the classification method. So as we mentioned, you can be you can use natural break, quantile, equal intervals, standard deviations, etc. And also uh, number of classes, so no more than five, as a general rules. And also you can choose a color that you like. Okay. So here we can see a clear pattern that. Uh, uh, which states has more um, gun violence instance. Uh, you can also perform some non-spatial visualization. So for example, here I can create a chart or I can create a scatter plot matrix uh, where I'm interested in seeing that uh, how the population is related. So let's say I want to see that the population relate to the number of instance and also number of people being killed and also injured. So I hit apply. OK, so now I have this uh, scatter plot. And I can also show the R square. OK, and you can see which one has the highest R square. So uh, the number injured is highly related to the uh, instance, which is uh, because if you have more instance, definitely there will be more people that will be injured. And also population versus R, uh, number of people being killed. So R square is 0 0.70. Okay, so that means if you have more, the state has more population, so it's highly likely that um, there will be more people being killed. Okay, so that is uh, a, a scatter plot matrix. So that's one way that we can get those results. Um, so if you go to the tools analysis, and also if you open this tool window, you can see that ArcGIS Pro also has some other tools like summarize within, summarize nearby, and also statistics. Uh, so if you are not familiar with spatial drawing, I feel like summarize within may more, might be more intuitive. So let's try that one to answer the same question. So the question is that 
for each single state, how many people being injured and also killed in total. So let's see summarize within. And again, input polygon will be the population for each state. And also summarize feature, we are going to summarize the mass shooting in 2019. Okay, and output. So here again, uh, pay attention to the result. So let's say we want to use the population summarize mass shooting. Okay. And in the field, so here we can see, okay, for the killed, uh, we want the total. And also for the injured, we also want the total. Okay. Uh, you can also add additional group field, but here it is not necessary. So you can see that summarize within is kind of more intuitive. So if you're not familiar with the spatial drawing, so you can also choose summarize within. And now let's run it. Okay, uh, it finally finished. So if you check that every time when you are running some tools, there's details. So if you check the details, and there's a pop-up window that contains all the information that you run, uh, so the input data, output data, all the parameters. And you can see that when I run summarize within, it took seven minutes. Okay, so that's that's pretty slow. So uh, it's far way slower than a spatial drawing analysis. Okay, uh, so let's look at the result. So if we open the attribute table, and actually pretty much the the same thing. So count of points, some of people being killed and also some people that in injured. Uh, so let's make sure that both layers, so from the summer within and also spatial drawing, both layers are selected. And let's go to map. And let's say we want to query the visible part, see if we have the same result. OK, so let's see check the taxes. And for taxes, we can see, or we can simply maximize the window and we can see for the first result, 71, uh, 31, 73, 1, 4, 6. For the second one, 31, 73, and also 146. So that's pretty much, the, that's, that's exactly the same. So that means to answer the same questions, and um, there are several ways that you can do that. You can use either spatial drawing, so that will give you um, the result, or you can use the new um, tool that called Summarize Within. So choose the one that you like, and also that you feel more comfortable. Okay, so let's remove um, those results. And let's also remove the state population. So let's just leave the county population um, and also the mass shootings. Okay, our second question is that, so we're going to look at the county levels. Um, and so for each single instance, so we, we want to see that what is a population that within this uh, within a buffer so within uh, a buffer that uh, with radius of 50 kilometers okay so within a buffer of 50 kilometers so how many uh, what is the population within that uh, 50 kilometers for each single buffer or within 50 meters what is the population uh, so to do that again there are also several ways so the first way that probably the most straightforward is that we're going to run a set of analysis. So for example, uh, we are going to first create a buffer. That is this one. And we choose mass shooting. And this one we call it uh, mass shooting buffer. And let's say we want the 50 kilometers. And uh, next, let's see. Okay, so that is a 50 kilometers. 
And we don't want dissolve because we want each instant has its own buffer. Okay, and now let's run it. Okay, so now we can see that for each single um, zone, each single instance, we have its own buffer. Okay, uh, so next we want to calculate um, the population. So uh, within each buffer. So what is that's the average population within each buffer. So uh, the county layer has a population. So the next we can do an intersect. So we go to analysis and let's do an intersect. <clears throat> so the input feature will be the buffer and also the population. Okay, and the output, so let's say that let's, the output will be the buffer intersect population. And we want to keep all the attributes and we run it. Okay, uh, so it is finally completed and it took 15 minutes and I don't know why it, it is so long um, normally so if I, I if I use a local ArcGIS Pro and I think it, it will just one or two minutes so probably I guess because everything is run on Amazon App Stream so that it's slower so that you can see 15 minutes so that's that's pretty amazing okay so look if we look at the intersect part and we can see that for all the part that so the overlapped when the uh, the buffer overlap with the population so we have an unique part okay so that so if if for if each buffer covers different uh, uh, counties so that will be a, a unique counties and if we open that attribute of this intersect Okay, and we all see that, okay, so for each individual buffers, uh, what are the population for each single county? Okay, so for each individual buffers, what is the population? Okay, so what is the population for, uh, for each county? Okay, for example, if you look at the first one, Okay, so that is this part. We can see that the population of that county is less than 200. Okay, however, in that instant, we have four people being killed. And if we move on to the next one, to another one, we can see for this part, uh, the population is this, and also it's a same buffer, I guess, actually. Yes, same buffer. So this county, that has 200 population. Okay, so we, now we know that for each county that uh, each buffer covers multiple counties and different counties have different number of populations. So now we want to know the average population um, for each buffer. So that is within 50 kilometers of each instance. So to do that, we can also go to the analysis. And here now we can use this uh, summarize statistics. So let's click that. And here the input table will be the intercept, so the buffer intercept the population. And output table, so uh, you, uh, so they just give us an automatic output table. So let's uh, mass shooting intersect. Uh, let's just call it mass shooting intersect summarize mass shooting intersect pop summarize okay and for the field so now let's say we can get the population okay county population and we want the average Okay, and 
we, we can also include the people being killed and we can get the average. So that will be the same actually. Uh, and other people being injured. Let's see the average. So here the case field. So based on which case field. So we want the FID of the buffers. Okay, we want the FID of the buffers. Okay, so basically we want to see, okay, so for each buffer, what is the average population? So here, for example, for each, for this buffer, we have one, two, three, three different counties. So we want to get, calculate average of the population. The average people being killed and all average people being injured will be the same for each buffer because the, the value will be the same. Okay, so now let's run it. Okay, uh, so let's look at the detail. So it took about two minutes, so that's okay. Um, now let's look at the table. Okay, so now we can see for different instance, uh, so we can see the average population and also for that instant, the number of people being killed and also being, being injured. Okay, so here we have this result. Uh, of course, we can create visualizations. So for example, if we want to create a chart, we can create a new chart and scan plot matrix. And here we can see that the uh, population and also people being killed and also injured. Okay, so you want to see that if there is a, a strong correlation that we think um, 50 kilometers. And um, if you look at R square, we can see R square is almost zero. And if you look at the the line, the trend line, linear trend line, you can see that it's it's all. So there's no strong correlation between number of people being killed uh, or injured versus the local population. So the population within 50 kilometers. Okay. Um, and also, if you want to create a map, uh, you can link this one back together to the mass shootings. And you can also create a map that shows the population um, within 30 kilometers. Okay, so that is one way to do that. So we need three steps, intersect, buffer, intersect, uh, intersect, and also summarize. And if you want to create visualizations, you also need to join the table back to the, to the feature classes. So it's it's feel like okay. So there are a lot of work to do to just get this simple result. So is there a simple way to do that? And the answer is yes. Okay. So let's clear the result first. So let's say we remove the buffers, uh, intersect ones, and also the the tables. So here let's go back to our question that okay. So now we have the mass shooting, and also population at the county level. So the question now become easier, a simple way that we can calculate the average population within 50 meters uh, for each incident. And the answer is yes. So it is called search nearby. Okay, so search nearby is also more intuitive. So if you, you are not familiar uh, with spatial analysis. Uh, however, so it is very convenient, but it is not free. Okay, so it is not free. Uh, so let's try that. So let's say the input feature, let's say, okay, we still want mass shooting. And the summary will be the county population. Okay, so here we see the mass shooting summarized nearby. So let, let's put that one to be more uh, specific. So summarize nearby population. And here you can choose, okay, so how do you want to measure the distance? Is that driving distance, uh, driving time, it, walking distance, etc. So let's just use a straight line. And the distance will be 50 kilometers. And what are the statistics do you want to use? So I want to know I want to know the average population. Okay, so just one single step. Okay, one single step, and also it's very very 
easy to understand. However, it is not free. So it is not free. So, so don't abuse this analysis. That's right. Well, uh, this is really a marathon analysis. So it took like 40 minutes to finish. Um, to be honest, if I run on a local computer, so normally it will take two to three minutes. So um, I'm not sure is that a problem of ArcGIS Pro or is that a problem of the AppStream. For AppStream, we are also using a decent um, instance. So okay, uh, so let's look at the result. So as you can see that ArcGIS Pro also the the summarize nearby also create a bunch of um, buffers. And if we look at the attribute table, and you can see that yeah, they create those 50 meter buffers where we do have number of people being killed, injured, um, and also the average population. So that is last um, the last column. Uh, so if you want to, you can also create visualizations, either a scatter plot matrix or a create a map. So let's see, that's something that's slightly different than the way that we did. Okay, and basically you can see it's it's much similar. So the R square are zeros. Okay, so I think the, the results are consistent uh, to the one that we have done earlier. Okay, so that is second way that how we can calculate the average um, population within 50 kilometers of each instance. Okay. My last uh, scenario is that, OK, so suppose what if I don't even have the population? So I just have the mass shootings that um, in each locations in the past year. So but I still want to get the number of the average population within 50 kilometers. So is that possible to do that? without population being downloaded? And the answer is yes. So if I go uh, to this uh, tool window, I can see there's also a new tool called Enrich. I really like this function because so that basically you just need to bring the data that you are interested in and you can always enrich your data. So you don't need to go to the sensors website to download those data. So you can just click the Enrich and they can do it, do everything for you. And also, of course, you can see that this will also cause credits. So let's say try it. So let's say I want to enrich this one. And how do you want to name your output? So that's enrich. That's fine. And let's add variables. And now you can see it's great. So here you have the variables in different categories, like health, housing, spending, race, education, crime policies etc and we are looking for the population so let's click population and so we are looking for the population totals so here you can see there are also more specified uh, population data and let's just look at 2020 total population okay so yeah so that's also another advantage um, because when we download data from sensors, um, we can only download from 2019. But here you can see 2020 is also available. Okay, so that's that's pretty cool. And here again, you can define your distance. How to measure the distance? Do you want street street line driving, etc.? So let's just street line. Um, distance or times so we want in this case 50 kilometers okay uh, again so this is is a probably the best <laughs> tool that i like on arcgis pro and however it is not free so um, use it with cultures especially if if you have so many records so be, be careful about this one and let's run it and see how long it will take Okay. Uh, to my surprise, uh, it only take it only took one minute. Okay. Um. So that's awesome, and that is kind of normal duration of those kind of analysis tools. And here we can see we have new um, points being created. Uh. So if we open the attribute table, 
and we can have a sense that they also still created um, a buffer. Okay, so they created 50 kilometer buffer. And next, they, uh, I'm not sure what kind of calculation they use, but they did calculate the population for 2020. And the one thing that uh, notice that they are using the population at the block level. So if you remember that for census data, we have data at a state level, county level, uh, track level, and also block level. So block level is the finest um, uh, level that have the population data, have the census data. So that is also awesome. And if we want create create a scatter plot to see that how that look like. So see if that has some change if we use uh, the enriched data. Um, looks like um, well the R square is still uh, almost zero. So uh, so there's no significant information that relationship between a number of people killed or injured to their local population, so the population within 50 kilometers. Okay, and finally, so if we go to the analysis, and we can see that there's a, a history. So if we click history, and we can see all the analysis we have done in this lab. Okay, uh, so we we'll never talk. Uh, if we save the project, so those history will also be saved. And so if you double click any of those history, so for example, if I double click buffer, so it will count out the analysis that we had done yet. So for example, if you want to repeat the same process to a different data set, and you can easily do that by calling by checking out the history.